Hello, it's Boyd over there, Boyd, and we've traveled all the way up to Seattle today to bring you a little something different. I uh, hope you enjoyed today. Thank you. I know as we were in Renton, a number of you were hoping that I was going to be doing something with the 737 MAX, but uh, not uh, this video. I did take a couple pictures while up there, as they are everywhere. Hopefully we'll be able to get something of that later on this year. However, I was there for the Microsoft Flight Simulator Global Preview Event, hosted at Rainier Flight Service at Brenton, Washington. And let's just jump right into it. Uh, I was very excited to be invited to this event. Uh, this was a big surprise coming out of E3 earlier this year, as, well, the product has existed, but it really hasn't been updated in almost a decade. When the uh, first screenshots came out, which you're looking at now, Many people just felt that uh, it couldn't possibly be like this, and these were artist renderings. After a full day in Renton playing the game, I can assure you that uh, it renders extremely well and uh, looks fantastic. The game predates Windows. Uh, it started in 1979 as a sub-logic game. I played the 1983 version on the Apple IIc, and I'd really been looking forward to seeing uh, what had changed over the years, and it's pretty much everything from the ground up. While also serving as a pun, Asobo, the developer, along with the Microsoft Flight Simulator team, was striving for realism, accuracy, and authenticity in reproducing this in today's standards and technology. I've uploaded a second video with the developer discussion that you can watch uh, at a separate time, but I'm going to focus pretty much on what we saw and were told during the morning. And uh, I was pretty impressed. I've, I've got to say the uh, the realism of this is quite outstanding, especially things like this that you're looking at now, which are clouds, which seem fairly benign, but are, are, are quite difficult to put together. After some morning PowerPoint presentations and basic discussion on the technology, we were given an area to sit down and actually play for as long as we wanted and go anywhere we wanted. What you're going to see here today is pre-alpha release video, uh, along with some other photographs and video that were taken during the event uh, mixed together. Starting with the basics and some of the things that people already know is that this game is massive. And it's two petabytes of data, and that's uh, obviously not locally available. The game will be available with uh, local storage, and then the rest of this will be streaming Further discussions about streaming and how they intend to do that are available in the developer discussion video that I have up. The development stage for this goes back to 2016. Uh, Sobo, the developer, was working on HoloLens products, and one of them was a walkthrough of Seattle, and Renton obviously is part of the area, and they were able to take the Bing data and put this together into basically what you're looking at now without the aircraft. The aircraft was added later, and this is where we are today. These screen recordings are all from real live 4K captures from the pre-alpha release software. And this is the stage that it's at now. We were told that uh, we're probably looking at a mid-2020 release for the final version. A Sobo broke it down basically into four parts for us, and that is the world, the sky, aerodynamics, and the cockpit. So let's start with the world. The entire world is included in the two petabytes of data, and they literally mean the entire world. Uh, they say all 40,000 airports are included, and I wasn't able to find much of the surface of the planet that didn't exist. You can see here if there's uh, some of my photos alongside the rendered version of the flight outside, and it's a uh, pretty staggering at uh, the realism and how much detail that they've got into it using the Bing data. A number of us noticed that the, the Bing data for some of the places we were familiar with seemed to be about one and a half to two years old, and we thought perhaps that was just because they had frozen the time while they were working on this. I took a look online the other day and uh, pretty much it just seems that certain areas that Bing satellite data or aerial data hasn't been updated uh, as much as some of the other areas, and that's that's fairly typical of uh, free commercial software that you you see in satellite imagery. So it's not too big of a deal. Uh, again, here you can see flying over Snoqualmie Falls on the left, and then uh, on the right the rendered game. You can take a look at uh, the sky, the clouds, the water, the textures. All of this is being streamed and rendered pretty much real-time. Uh, some of it's being cached, obviously, but uh, 
just the uh, the incredible amount of detail was uh, was quite surprising. In this pre-release alpha, Renton and San Francisco were the most highly detailed, as they'd spent the most amount of time on those so far. A lot of the work for this is done off-site using the Microsoft Azure Cloud and of course the software developed in-house at Asobo to develop all of this and it really looks quite amazing. And I know I keep saying it over and over but I spent a lot of time flying around the planet just looking at stuff everywhere. Even though this was a flight simulator game and I, I needed to check out the, the aircraft and see how they responded and flew with the aerodynamics. I spend a, a great deal of time going to airports that I was familiar with uh, to take a look at the, the rendering and just to see really what was out there. I flew out of uh, Renton, uh, Midway, John Wayne, Guatemala City, LaGuardia, Osaka, including Kansai out in the water, Haneda in Tokyo, uh, Mali in the Maldives, London City, went over to Heathrow, Hong Kong, Sydney, I flew over the Alps, uh, both in uh, Switzerland and France for a while. I even went down to McMurdo in uh, Antarctica, and even Area 51, which uh, didn't have a lot going on at it, but uh, it was actually pretty interesting that it was in there, marked and available to find. Areas of the planet that uh, didn't have satellite data available to were recreated using other means, and uh, the team also had to go through and account for the fact that when satellites passed over, sometimes there would be clouds, shadows, or other things. So they, they had to account for that in putting all of this together in the data, in addition to everything else they've added. Again, this was a pre-release version, and uh, all the airports aren't complete yet, but uh, they should be by the time this comes out. Certain things were missing, such as in Sydney, the Sydney Opera House, the Sydney Bridge weren't available yet, but they are complex structures that are difficult to just reproduce straight from Bing data and uh, the same for Guatemala City Airport which was uh, actually quite flat when the area is uh, definitely on a mountaintop in a volcanic region and I expect all of this to get sorted out by the time the game comes out. One of the first things people do is try and fly over and find their own house or where they're from and uh, I did that as well. Uh, currently living just south of uh, John Wayne Airport in Orange County and again that's some of the area uh, along the, the mountains there that uh, haven't been updated in some time by Bing Maps which uh, was fine I was still able to find the area and the roads leading up to it but uh, some of the Bing data for the area online still shows where the Altara Marine Corps Air Station was which is now the Great Orange Park things like that uh, will, will in increase and improve over time one of the things that they'll be able to do having this data available to them offline and, and in the cloud is update and fix these things um, as time goes on and they do feel that this will be at least a decade long project and that's before anything else happens. There was a lot of discussion about about the fact that this uh, started off as a HoloLens project for Asobo and whether or not this might develop into a VR product someday and it's, it's pretty easy to see that uh, once the computational power is there and the ability to deliver something like this to someone's home, uh, the, the, the next step for VR would be absolutely amazing for something like this and would add a, an unparalleled level of realism. And it's one of the things I had the most trouble doing while I was there was actually focusing on the aircraft itself, uh, the controls, the surfaces, the interaction with the instruments, FMS, flight management software, autopilots, things of that nature because I was just so enamored with flying around the planet and seeing everything. I, I could see that uh, someone could literally sit there for hours visiting places they've never been there before. And, you know, this, this is opening up uh, an amazing way of using Bing data to, to view the planet and see the planet in a way that seems very natural in hindsight, but uh, hasn't really been available until now for the mass population. So in this clip here, as we take off out of uh, Renton and we start to head down, or actually I should say up the, uh, the sound towards uh, Snohomish out to Snoqualmie, uh, we also were able to go up in a small plane while we were there, and Rainier Flight Service provided that, the courtesy of Microsoft. And uh, you can see that uh, I took some video of the Snoqualmie Falls uh, just out the window as we went along. And you can contrast that with the, the video that's up here, just flying around Renton on the, the left side. 
with the occasional look out the window, doing basically turns around a point as we're doing. Um, how the sky moves, how the aircraft moves with the air, how the ground looks, trees look, the light moves through, and everything that goes along with it. Um, the realism and how it feels like the actual flight uh, really gets into your head after a while, and you could just spend hours and hours and hours duplicating what you would do on a normal flight, uh, training flight, practice flight. Uh, if you've ever wanted to, to do any of this and never thought you had the opportunity before, it's certainly available in this or will be starting next year on the PC and then followed by the Xbox version. Now, if you already have a flight simulator set up, uh, you're, you're pretty much ready to do this already. Uh, I assume that the Xbox version will work nicely with the controller. What it'll also do is it'll definitely open this up to um, a new group of people that have probably never done this. And as Microsoft said that they're going to do this with the Game Pass product. So it will basically open this to people who, who've never even thought of downloading a flight simulator. And I feel for the most part that uh, it's so easy to fly and you can actually take the simulator and sort of back it to the edge that uh, a lot of people are actually going to take this just to see what they've done with the planet and how they've rendered it all. And the flight simulation aspect will fall to the side for some people. Uh, but it's uh, just such an advanced product now that uh, I can definitely see that this is going to be a uh, future training device probably at some point. I wouldn't be surprised if it ended up with some sort of FAA or EASA certification down the road. Uh, but uh, certainly that's not the roadmap at this point. Uh, just getting this out is one of the big projects, and uh, it's certainly headed that way pretty well. The alpha release is coming soon, and people can sign up for that online. Along with the world, they developed the sky, and the sky uh, does not disappoint. Uh, according to developers, they've matched and found every possible combination of cloud and fog and uh, weather on the planet. Uh, I was able to go quite a few of the, the cloud settings. Uh, one of the other amazing features you have here is uh, you can choose whether you want to fly in clear air, uh, partly cloudy, overcast, rain. Uh, thunderstorms were not available to us uh, in this pre-release, but I'm told they will be later. And uh, one of the, the, the most amazing things uh, I still think was that you were able to use live weather and time of day um, from anywhere on the planet that you're doing right now. So. You can set this up to fly into Seattle now, select live Seattle weather, and it will be nighttime, daytime, whatever it is, and the actual weather conditions. They developed fully volumetric clouds that uh, act upon each other and the light that's around them. So if uh, the sun's coming through behind it, you'll get the shadowing. If there's a cloud in front of another cloud, it'll create a shadow on the other cloud, just like real life. Uh, I was unable to find a situation where the clouds did not look lifelike or like anything that you would see while actually flying uh, around. Uh, they uh, certainly seem to act like real clouds. They've spent a lot of time on the physics in this game as well. As you fly into a cloud, you'll get the turbulence along with uh, moisture. Uh, this game is also capable not only of producing rain, but uh, frost on the control surfaces and things like that. As you'll see later in some of this video, the uh, water droplets will stream across the window just like they do in a real aircraft. Uh, they've spent uh, quite a bit of time working on all the aerodynamics and physics necessary to make pretty much everything the way you would think it should look or does really look in real life. One of the other key aspects that they worked on was trying to make sure that the uh, accuracy and authenticity of the cockpit is also relayed there. And you can see everything in here and you're basically able to use a full Garmin 1000 or whatever the particular aircraft will have as if you would in real life. Uh, here's a basically a composite. Uh, the top is uh, myself coming in in one of the uh, flights that we did showing a landing at Renton. The bottom is the rendered one from the game and uh, obviously the aircraft's moving at a slightly different speed but you definitely get a real feel for the fact that the, the motion, everything around is uh, quite accurate, realistic. The lights, the runway markings, even the uh, tire marks on the runway are all accounted for. Now in the uh, clips that they provided, I left the audio running in the background. They've had an entire audio team working on how planes sound inside, outside, uh, all different kinds of engines, different power levels. They're authentically reproduced digitally. 
And I thought I'd just leave that playing in the background while we're doing this, so if you wonder what the hum is, that's it. There were some basic ATC radio um, things going on in the background, but uh, nothing particularly robust yet. Uh, we did try tuning in ATIS at a couple of airports, weren't able to get any of that, but uh, there is a little bit of chatter in some of the Renton area. Uh, all of this is expected to probably come at a future date. Um, things like other aircraft around you, the ability for uh, someone to even do air traffic control simulation are all things that are possible in the future, uh, but not currently on the drawing board. You can see, again, more of that's in the developer video that I have alongside this. So along with cockpit realism, you can also see things like the shadow there on the ground uh, with the, the sun. I already spoke about, you can see the rubber on the runway, uh, other things going on on the ground. Uh, they said that uh, they're actually going to spend time and create actual blades of grass. Uh, they added uh, realism to the trees. They estimate their trees to be uh, over a trillion at this point. And uh, they continue to work on coloring. Uh, based off of uh, Bing data, and of course you can see that the buildings have started to take on a, quite a strong three-dimensional view. You can see CenturyLink Field down there, and as I flew through Bellevue, I was able to see uh, hotels, building names, things of that nature as you flew around. Uh, obviously, I was uh, well below a thousand feet, but um, it is a simulation, and uh, I did spend a lot of time going up and down streets, uh, flying low, and actually just really trying to take in as much of the scenery as I could before getting to the aircraft controls and how they all worked. The aerodynamics have received a huge update in this version of the game. They have uh, over a thousand different surfaces now, which uh, allows the aircraft to respond pretty much as it does in real life. Uh, for example, if you're going to do slow flight and stall the wing, the stall can happen at any portion uh, along the wing and then uh, continue with the rest of the, the plane. It's not just going to break off to the left or right instantaneously on its own, and uh, they'll be able to take the forces and work on those as they would in real life. The spin video wasn't included with the package that we were provided with to show you today, uh, but I did uh, spend a lot of time doing... Um, I did a, did a few spins, but I also did uh, a number of wingovers uh, to the left and to the right, uh, playing with the rudders, the controls, uh, the speed. Uh, you will get a warning if you overspeed the aircraft to a point. Um, it, it, uh, it will say that you've oversped the aircraft at a certain point when the, uh, the wings have presumably come off electronically. I initially found the aircraft to be uh, a little easy to over control, but uh, a lot of that's in the settings of the flight simulator controls itself. Uh, the rudder pedals, the yoke, and things of that nature, which can be adjusted individually. Um, there's a, a vast amount of uh, selectability and customization that's available so far already in this product uh, to allow people who already have um, you know, th thrust joysticks, things of that nature, uh, to set these up to, to be comfortable. Uh, they do say support for multiple monitors um, should be coming at some point, or at least the ability to definitely wrap around uh, the visuals using what's there, scaling the resolution. Using the mouse, I was able to manipulate most of the controls in the cockpit. I wasn't able to find anything that I couldn't push or touch uh, that was real and sh should be something that I can get a hold of. Uh, there's a uh, vast overlay system of checklists that will allow you to go all the way from a completely dark aircraft, starting it up, Setting it up as you're getting ready to start, go through the start procedure all the way up to taxi and takeoff. You can go down to as small a level as you want. If you feel comfortable just starting it up, getting going, setting the flaps, and heading off into the sky, you can also do that. There's no limitations on the game. The, uh, the walkthrough checklists are actually quite interesting and uh, will be very good for people who are beginners to this and want to learn more, or who actually plan on using this to uh, practice flight itself. Having a product like this as a student pilot, private pilot, even uh, an instrument pilot uh, would have been invaluable during my training and uh, when I was doing my work as a flight instructor, uh, having a tool as amazing as this would have been, would have been quite, a, quite incredible to have. Uh, at the time, 
the simulators were um, reasonably basic um, and they've, they've come along the FSX products and other simulator products have been around in uh, FBOs for training for quite some time now but I think this really takes it to the next level particularly because everything's here and it's the real visuals and something you can tangibly do. I see this being a, a fantastic learning tool for a, a student pilot or someone getting ready to do a solo, cross country, anything of that nature. They'll be able to go through checklist practice, takeoff practice, uh, deal with different kinds of weather to see what happens when the terrain disappears or their visual points not available on the ground. Uh, being able to use some of the navigation aids to help back up their paths. Uh, basically, you know, pre-flying a flight before you do it, uh, what we would have called armchair flying before, uh, except that it's actually here, you can fly over it, see it, uh, basically you could pause it, take a look at it, take some screenshots, follow along with your VFR sectional at home. Uh, if you've got something as advanced as the G1000s in here, you'll be able to practice with that, set up waypoints, uh, you know, work on Class B airspace, things of this nature that uh, are fully involved in this simulation uh, from the bottom up. I flew three different aircraft during the presentation, and that's what was available to us at the time. Uh, the most complex being the TBM, uh, and it uh, certainly didn't disappoint all the way down to being able to back the aircraft up using the PT-6. The reverse thrust sound of the turbine versus the forward sound was uh, accurate as it could possibly be. And uh, basically spent uh, three hours flying around the world uh, to all the airports that I spoke about. Uh, trying to find different things. I mean, I, I wasn't looking for Easter eggs, but I was trying to find things that I, I knew and I had seen over time. Uh, for example, the old Kai Tak runway still exists in Hong Kong, and it uh, hasn't been completely developed in real life yet, and just like it is in the game. So I was able to go in, take off from uh, the new Hong Kong airport, fly around, land on the old Hong Kong Kai Tak runway, and uh, taxi around for a bit and just take a look at the scenery uh, from that side in Kowloon. Uh, the ability just to keep flying and looking, as I'm sure you've been doing while I've been talking here. And as I'm, I'm sure you've noticed, uh, along with everything else that's going on, you can see the bugs on the windshield. If you want to go back just a few seconds to where the left side of the window was there, looking out, you can see the scratches on the window that you get as a, a student pilot and a private pilot. It just happens to the plexiglass over time, and it's just something that's inherent to the flight training. Now this clip uh, sort of puts a lot of this all together here. You've got uh, a full glass cockpit, uh, rainy day, heavy clouds, and you can see the beads of water already picking up there. Um, again, they spend all this time in volumetric clouds. You can see a rainbow off in the distance. Uh, the, the shafts of rain as they come down act the way they're supposed to. The weather acts the way it's supposed to. The wind acts the way it's supposed to. Uh, it's all deeply integrated into the, uh, the simulation. And uh, as you can see, it just looks incredible. Uh, some of these shots would look exactly as if you had gone outside and taken a, a selfie of your aircraft. Uh, and it would be really hard to tell that uh, this wasn't an authentic photo from real life versus a simulation that you're playing live. And again, uh, none of these are rendered specifically for this. They're taken directly from the, the software that we played pre-alpha release. Uh, the water surfaces have all been rendered as well. As you get closer, you start to see waves, uh, things of that nature. Uh, as you get further away, they tend to look a little glassier or smoother, and uh, they seem to be that way for the whole planet. Uh, and you can see here that uh, the views from outside the aircraft look realistic. The flight surfaces are all there. They all move correctly. And uh, you can actually see to some extent into the cockpit of what you're doing. And so there's some more of what I was talking about. And you can see the scratches on the windshield there on the left. Uh, the light moves around inside the reflections. You can see cockpit instruments reflecting in the plexiglass, uh, particularly like in the evening uh, as it's going on. Uh, it's basically... When you're looking at the outside view, you get a touch of lens flare to give you that uh, cinematic feel. Once you're back inside again, the cockpit acts as if you would be sitting there taking a look at it. Uh, and you can see the moon up there has come up and started to interact with everything. Uh, the top-down bird's eye view is another fantastic one. And if you haven't noticed the traffic, it's definitely there. 
We were able to see a couple of places where the traffic was a little bit off in this pre-release. Uh, for example, they might be going across the road, but uh, unlike some of the actual commercial simulators out there where um, it's sort of just a repetitive uh, vehicle going back and forth at the same time, I was unable to see uh, the same vehicle twice. Um, I'm sure it passed me, but there were just so many vehicles moving on the ground and s such a variety that I was unable to see any repetition whatsoever. Uh, one of the jokes later on that uh, is in the, the accompanying video, the developer thing, was uh, that they haven't uh, added any butterflies yet. Uh, what we were able to see was, uh, at least in San Francisco, was uh, flocks of birds uh, flying around while we, we were flying around uh, and in interacting with the aircraft. Uh, a lot of these other cities uh, that we saw in the pre-release here uh, didn't have anything else with the exception of, of what was on the water or uh, roads around us at the time. Uh, to some extent that was actually quite enjoyable because uh, you didn't have to worry about flying to somebody else or dealing with anything else. Uh, you sort of had the entire world to yourself. And, uh... Bridges uh, were another thing that uh, hadn't been fully rendered in a number of cities yet. As this is taken from a lot of flat data, it's uh, something that needs to be built up over time. But as you can see in this particular clip, uh, very complete, very accurate. Uh, as you get further off in the horizon, uh, in particular on a day that has uh, weather or precipitation, uh, the moisture itself, uh, just from a, a standard hazy day, is visible. Um, and they went all the way out to 600 kilometers uh, at altitude, which is pretty much sort of the, the distance that they wanted to keep it at for as far as you could see on a normal day. Uh, as you change the weather, the visibility changes with what you've got, and it's uh, very realistic. Um, if you've ever taken a picture out of an aircraft going to or from some place, uh, other than the fact it's overexposed a great majority of the time, uh, you've seen the precipitation or the, the condensation that's available in the air from the particulate matter, uh, whether it be um, fog, smaze, haze, uh, smoke, things of this nature. And uh, you can see that in this game they uh, have, have accurately reproduced it uh, to the best possible way um, that still looks natural uh, and reflects, as they've said all along, the realism, accuracy, and authenticity of flight uh, and the simulation itself. Here's another example of putting all together with the, the light reflecting on the river as you come in. Uh, here's a beautiful view of the aircraft working, the gear coming down, the doors opening, closing, uh, the reflections off the surfaces, uh, the aircraft moving left and right as you're flying it. Again, there's that reflection on the left side of the cockpit instruments and the glass. You've got uh, control of the time of day. In this instance, uh, you can put it together pretty much when you fly any time from Magic Hour, just as they had. So you can see here, flying over again, the volumetric clouds and uh, this next bird's eye shot looking down at the aircraft, you'll be able to see the cloud vapor uh, come and go uh, as it does when you're flying around. It's, uh, the clouds move and react with each other. Uh, you know, you're between layers here in this one, which is pretty much what you'd see flying over Florida a lot of the time, uh, particularly in the summer before the, the build-ups have. And you can see the clouds there as uh, the front left of the wing sort of uh, increasing and decreasing, almost like breathing, which is uh, pretty much what clouds really do. And uh, to be able to get that into a game uh, and keep it both subtle and accurate uh, is certainly just something that was uh, quite incredible to see for a pilot like myself. And as you jump back up from the flight training aspect or the smaller aircraft into something like the TBM that we have here flying over London, uh, you see the Thames, the buildings. Uh, this is obviously a, another magic hour shot. Uh, I was able to fly up and down the Thames uh, right through the middle of uh, Tower Bridge, uh, all the way up to Heathrow, landed at Heathrow. Uh, you can see the O2 Arena there on the left. Uh, this is down by where London City Airport is. Uh, all of these are available to you. It's uh, hard to see in this picture, but uh, the actual rotating beacons work at all the airports for finding them uh, at uh, twilight or nighttime. It helps aid just like you would find a, a normal airport. In the product development, there's uh, still a lot of talk about uh, what aircraft will be included. Smaller aircraft, larger jets, um, 
possibilities for uh, plugins for helicopters, etc., down the road. Uh, additional plugins for uh, tra traditional plugins for the software, uh, buildings, airports, uh, other things uh, are all being discussed with third parties and may be available next year. It's uh, also discussed in the developer video later on. You can see the uh, cockpit reflections, the light, the bugs and dirt on the windshield all as they would be uh, in a real aircraft obviously this is a, a training flight here uh, I've overlaid uh, a little bit of the cockpit that we flew in doing the flight around uh, Seattle and Renton just to show uh, just the very subtle motion of going up and down uh, dealing with the air currents that you see uh, to, to some extent they seemed a little over pronounced in the game uh, but when you base them on the actual aircraft and get back into it, you, you see that uh, the motion is very realistic. The gauges work the way they're supposed to. There's those scratches again out the window. Uh, they all interact. Everything works the way it's supposed to. Uh, there's, there's not one point. You know, the compass spins in the correct direction. Uh, all these things that you... Uh, have, have come to expect uh, just work so well that you don't even realize that they're there uh, until you look and go, oh, hey, look, that thing's working. Wow, that's really cool. So here we are coming in uh, over John Wayne Santa Ana Airport in Orange County, California. And you can just see the buildings, the coastline, the runway, everything that's going on there. And there's the toll road behind it, the bridges, the approach and uh, one, one of the things here that uh, really still is is hard to explain to anyone who's, who's done any flight training in the past is how a big step like this it is to use um, as much real footage outside and data photos satellites of what's around you this shot here is a, a mid-2000s uh, model commercial flight simulator, and this is going into Kennedy Airport. Uh, this is today going into John Wayne in the flight simulator, which basically is available in your home living room. Well, that's a basic overview of the Microsoft Flight Simulator, which they're currently calling 2020, uh, from the Global Preview event. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed watching and uh, seeing this as much as I did doing it in person. Uh, watch as you touch down here, you're actually going to see a little bit of smoke come off of each of the tires there from the rubber. Uh, it's uh, just that level there that uh, they keep squeezing to everything. And this uh, final shot here with the rain going down the windshield, uh, down the side of the aircraft, interacting with the flight control services going into Toronto. Uh, just a beautiful almost looks like a, a painted evening uh, just this is the sort of thing that just exists everywhere in the game uh, and because you have live weather and things like this each time you touch it it's new and authentic and something nobody else has done uh, which basically means your your game is never going to run out of possibilities uh, I look forward to seeing the, the alpha version the beta version and the final cut next year and then following on that with the Xbox uh, as I said before, I believe this is going to open up uh, Flight Simulator to a lot of new people who've never done it before, just for the sheer fact of seeing the planet. Uh, but I think gamers are going to be very happy as well. Along with the rest of the uh, Flight Simulation community. Well, that's it for today. Uh, thanks for watching. Check out the developer Q&A and uh, have a good day.